guys, I am here today with a guest I'm very excited to have. So this is Denzel Mensa, who you probably already know from YouTube. And if you don't, you should absolutely go look at the description and follow him immediately because he has awesome type content. He posts super regularly. Um, and he's got really, really great insights, not just about typology, but just about life in general. Um, and Denzel and I used to run a weekly live stream. So we used to get together and talk about type once a week. And it's been at least like a year, a year or two since we've done that. So I am really, really excited that you're here and we're having another chat. So thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me for real. Like, I, I missed you a lot. So us, hey. you know, even though this isn't really like live right now, like this is just fun to be able to have you back on my computer screen. And I'm really excited for the conversation that we're about to have. <laughs> Aw, likewise. So Denzel is an ENFJ and I'm an ENFP, and we're going to be chatting about what the differences between those two types are, um, because there is a decent amount of confusion between them. Like, I think I typed as an ENFJ the first time that I took a personality test, mm -hmm. and I've met ENFJs who've typed as ENFPs, and there's a lot of superficial difference or similarities between those two types. Um, so we're going to go over, like, what those are, and then what the differences are, and then what the deep similarities and differences are because when you get into cognitive functions and looking at what's actually going on internally for both types it's very different even though like the output might look very similar mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so we were chatting before the live stream started or i guess not the, oh my god i have to get out of the habit of saying live stream when <laughs> on my <computer> stream. <laughs> we we're chatting before we started recording um about some of the similarities between our types and there are a lot of them like i really feel like if you meet an ENFP or an ENFJ can be hard to tell from the get-go unless you're really well versed in functions. Um, what's op like what's operating internally for those people and um, how to type them. So I think we could just start with some of the similarities. Um, yeah. So one that we were immediately talking about was wanting to be group affiliated and having like just a very, very big appetite for social interaction. And that's also because both of us are social doms in the Enneagram. So that might change a little bit between different types. Um, but I think you'll very often see ENFPs and ENFJs at the center of like intentional communities that they've sought out um, and that they want to be surrounded by and intentionally surrounding themselves with a lot of different people and wanting to hear a lot of different perspectives and insights from people and wanting to get to know a lot of people well. Um, all the EF types you'll see this with, but definitely you'll see it with ENFP and ENFJ, especially if they're healthy and, and kind of in a good place where they've gone to lengths to create that for themselves right right yeah like we i, I see us especially um as the catalyst a lot of times for these kinds of um communities just like you said like being like in the center and everything like usually finding the topics for these communities to kind of like you know the enfp is known as like the champion and so i see like enfps a lot of times like kind of finding that cause for a lot of people to kind of center around. But then I think that ENFJs also have a tendency to do that as well, even though it might be coming from a different place. And it's even interesting to see how like both of them get the same results, but then, you know, just like a different mind wiring, like you said. So it takes like, you have to really look at the functions to see like, oh, we both look the same on the outside for this reason, but then, um, from the inside you're operating more from a place like this and this is how you operated that whereas like for an enfp you're operating it this way but both being like idealists and kind of like people focused or community focused in a way i see us as like catalysts in that type of sense yeah i really like that actually because it's not just about being a part of the communities it's wanting them to have i think the enfj wants them to have direction the mm -hmm. ENFP is a little bit more like, let's just gather people around this cause and let them kind of live out whatever feeling or whatever thoughts they're going to have about it. The ENFP yeah. is a little more directed in that they'll kind of, and they, I'm like already hopping into the differences, but um, they'll be thinking a lot about like, how is this going and what direction is it moving in? In what direction are different people moving in in relation to each other and themselves and the group? The ENFP, I think, is a little bit more, um, like I don't think a ton about the, direction of the communities i just think about how is everyone feeling like is everyone happy um how can we create like like how can we take this to the next level in a bunch of different ways and it's fun mm -hmm. to explore all those different ways mm -hmm. um whereas i think the enfj is a little bit more intentionally focused on like the long-term outcome of anything they're a part of 
Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Um, I feel like kind of like what you said, you know, like you're thinking about a lot of how is everybody feeling, which, you know, of course, is an ENFJ. Like that's also like what's the top of our radar. Like, okay, how does everybody feel about this, you know, harmony and everything. Um, but then also at the same time, it's like, uh, I think for us, it's it's kind of like, it's almost as a, uh, it's a unity that we're looking for um, within the group. And then when we find that unifying point, I believe, then it's kind of like, now we want to continue to capitalize on that unifying point. Hmm. Um, and I feel like, I don't know if, you know, would you say that ENFPs often like would do the same thing? Is that what you're also describing? Um, Cause then that when you said intentionality, like that's kind of like what came to mind. It's like, okay, this is the, like you said, the direction or the vision that I have. So now I'm unifying everybody around this vision and we all, you know, how do we feel about this vision? You know, if you aren't, if you don't like the vision, then well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and we don't want you around here, you know, but then if you are like for the vision, then, you know, that way we can all carry this together and move forward um, as a community, as a group and try to, you know, better ourselves throughout that. So then it's like having this one vision, this one cause, and then allowing um, opportunities from like, you know, down the road, like anything that will um, plunge us closer to that vision as a piece try to take advantage of those opportunities um but the enfj i would say is always tapping in to like make sure like is everybody still on board with this vision um and tweaking the vision if necessary being open to like other people's like strengths and ideas um to further help us get toward that vision and i think the funny thing also is that once we have that vision and once we start getting closer to that vision um we already have another vision. <laughs> so I, I think about like Martin Luther King Jr., which I know like a lot of people have been like, oh, is he INFJ, ENFJ? I like really studied his life and I'm, I'm firmly believe that he's an ENFJ. Um, but one of the things I thought that was like really interesting about him was that, you know, everyone knows him for like, I have a dream. And he had that vision that we are now living today. You know, racism, of course, is not dead, but all of us are like, you know, little black boys and little black girls are, you know, like playing together and like going to school together and stuff like that. And it's way better than when he was alive, but now we have another vision, you know, like it. So I think that ENFJ is a lot of times, like, especially those who often say like, oh, FE doms, like they just conform to social norms. One thing that I've always like saw was that if anything, we're the ones who are often creating them and trying to plunge yeah. them forward. Um, and so we're, the social norms exist a lot of times because of us. And that's why it seems like we're conforming to them. But then as soon as we reach that social norm ideal, we already have another advanced social norm that we're trying to work toward. And we're never going to reach that ideal carrot. Like it's the donkey that's chasing after the carrot forever. Does that make sense? I have so many thoughts on what you just said that to the point where I'm already like, I'm going to have to cut down my own response to this. <laughs> so hard. Um, first of all, I totally agree with what you were saying about uh, ENFJs being very often at the center of like social changes and having this incredibly visionary approach. And um, I think it really is that auxiliary NI, it's underestimated in a lot of type profiles, like both ENTJ and ENFJ. They're looked at a lot for their dominant function. Like we talk about ENTJs and how productive they are. We talk about ENFJs and how warm and people oriented and loving they are. But we really leave out of the type descriptions that auxiliary NI, which is so forward thinking and so influential. Like I would, if I were to give a single word for ENFJ, it would probably be influence. Like mm -hmm. the ability to see something that, that needs to be done in the future, a direction that people need to move and be able to get other people on board with that vision, which is exactly what you were saying. Yeah. Um, and that's a really, really under discussed quality of ENFJs. And it, it just reminded me of a conversation I was having yesterday. This is a bit of a tangent, but um, my partner and I were talking about uh, ESTJs and ENTJs in the wellness space, because there's a lot of both of those types in the kind of like morning routine productivity space, um, which her and I both work in, um, I, myself part-time, her full-time. But um, we're talking about like how you spot the difference and it's like, 
ESTJs tend to be, they internalize a lot of those things. Like they kind of internalize all the best ways to be productive and to set routines and then they'll live them out and kind of um, perpetuate them. But ENTJs are the ones who go in and figure it out in the first place. Like they're the ones who do all the research and like figure out, okay, this is the most optimal way to start your day. And they're, they're like kind of setting the precedent. And then those with SI come in and they want to learn the system to death and, and optimize it and use it as best as possible. But we don't give enough credit to the fact that auxiliary NI because NI is a little bit more conscious for them than it, it even is for people who use it as a dominant function, um, mm -hmm. who are kind of like swimming in it. So it's, it's a little bit less observable. Mm -hmm. Having auxiliary NI allows you to be very clear headed, I think, about your visions because you're a, enough removed from them that you're kind of looking, looking at them and can analyze them the same way ENFPs can analyze their introverted feeling. Wow. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, that's just something we don't give anywhere near enough credit at like, even, nowhere in the ballpark of the proper amount of credit to ENFJs. I fully agree with that. Like every time I'm seeing like ENFJ profiles and stuff like that, it, I, I love the idea that, you know, we get known for like, you know, our warmth and our, um, you know, like how friendly or whatever that we are. But yeah, I think that the NI is like very, very heavily, like just diluted. Um, and it just comes down to like small crumbs, like, oh, and you know, sometimes maybe they'll say like mantras and, you know, have like a, five day plan or five year plan or something, but let's just focus on that, that warmth and that kindness. And then when you look at maybe like with other types, then you'll see like a lot of like, you know, like the INFJ is not only known for their NI, but they're also very heavily known for like, look at how great they are with people and yeah. you read this. And it's like, so <laughs> where's the same kind of, you know, treatment for the dominant and auxiliary uh, there. So I'm glad that you noticed that too, because I guess like sometimes it's like, is it just because I'm an ENFJ that I'm saying like, well, we're being, you know, whatever, like thrown to the side in this way, or, you know, or is everybody else also seeing this problem? But, but yeah, yeah. I agree with everything you said. No, it's true. Cause even with the ENFP profile, I feel like we are overrepresented for our FI and underrepresented for our NE. Like we're talked a lot, like people talk a lot about ENFPs and how they're like, you know, so emotional and so emotionally intelligent maybe, or so um, like kind of always living a new, like adventurous emotional experience. But I'm like, that's a lot less of our experience of life than our extroverted intuition is and our, I, like our exploration of ideas and, and the way that we think, but we're over um, stereotyped on our FI and you're under stereotyped on your NI, which makes me just think maybe people just don't understand N functions enough to create that's problem stereotypes. That really could be a big thing right there. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm glad that we'll be able to clarify that a little bit more in this video. <laughs> yeah. But okay. So third thing that your original um, thoughts made me think of was when you were talking about that, um, that like NI vision versus what it looks like for ENFPs in a community. I had this, like, I was picturing like two ships leaving a harbor and the ENFJ ship is like this beautiful, elegant ship that everyone like, everyone gets on board and there's like, you know, all of this like wonderful stuff happening where everyone gets together and decides like, okay, we're steering the ship in this direction. <laughs> and the ENFP ship, it's like a, like a pirate ship where it's like, you just get on board and it's like, okay, we're going in search of treasure. But we don't <laughs> really, we're like, we have some ideas of where the treasure is and we're just going to kind of go look. But if something more interesting happens along the way, we're going to reevaluate constantly. Whereas like, I just see the ENFJ ship is like, just steering so like there's someone like at the front of the ship with their compass always like moving in a certain direction and checking in to make sure like this still works and the enfp ship is kind of like okay we have five different places that sound <laughs> cool like let's let's go explore as many of them as we can and then if we have a better idea along the way we're gonna we're gonna go with that and then once we get to the first treasure site we're gonna be like okay what's what now what are we working with and let's set the next route but it's not as directed um, and I really think that's the difference. That's one of the main differences of the ENFJ versus INF, or sorry, ENFJ versus ENFP psyche. Mm -hmm. It's just that e ENFJs have a lot of um, purpose, direction, vision. It's not that ENFPs don't, right. uh, but we are a lot less directed in our vision. Like we like to keep our options open. It's fun for us to constantly think, where could we go next? So if we felt like we were on a ship that was sailing in a certain direction, 
no matter how exciting that direction is, we're going to start getting sad along the way when we're like, oh, I just thought of this other place we could sail the ship, but we can't go there <laughs> um, because we don't like, we don't have as much finesse, I guess, for lack of a better term in mm -hmm. terms of our vision. So I think for ENFJs and correct me if I'm wrong, it's exciting to think and like constantly reassess and reevaluate and add to how you're going to optimize this vision. And that's the fun part. So like for you, possibilities and potential exists within that. But for yeah. us, it's kind of like the big overarching vision it's, is what's fun. So if we're expected to kind of narrow and narrow and narrow our, our focus and figure out more and more and more about what makes one thing really exciting, um, that's going to drain us very quickly because we just want to think of like five different visions. And mm -hmm. then we might end up at one. We might end up at five. It doesn't really matter. The fun part is like deciding, okay, we're going to steer the ship in a different direction all of a sudden. Uh, yeah. And that's, that's, I think a big difference and we'll be having fun on the ship. Like it's party boat, but it's not, it's not um, as cohesive by any means. Got you. Yeah. I definitely pictured everything. Like I literally pictured the ENFJ ship and everybody on it and stuff like that. And then, and then the camera pans over to the pirate ship with the yeah. ENFJ. And honestly, like, honestly speaking, it, it further shows how, which I think is one of the beauties of type because a lot of people, I feel like they get this twisted, like literally no type is better than the other type. Um, and that's not just with ENFP or ENFJ, but like for all types, like they're just different. So that that pirate ship is just different, but like, you know, it depends on what your flavor is. Like, yeah. do you want to be on the one that's like, you know, more, uh, oh, we're, we have like kind of like one vision and we're going toward this. And then for us, um, I think, which is a difference, like where the J and the P uh, could get mixed up a little bit is that we have a little bit of leniency toward the ENFP where it's like, we have this destination that we want to arrive at and on our way to that destination with that compass, um, the fun of it, I guess, is that we can enjoy other things that may pop up along the way, but only if those things can like, kind of like get us right back to that same vision right. point. Um, so it's like, okay, you know, like one of the things I'll always assess is like, okay, if we explore that, or if we explore that, will it bring us any closer to the actual vision that we have? Whereas if I'm understanding you correctly, like the ENFP is like, we have like five different, you know, yeah, like mission, like places, like to destinations. And so if something pops up, it's like, oh, I really want to explore that. Like, well, will it get you to the place that you want to get to? Um, it'll probably get me closer to one of the five. Yeah. Um, or maybe there's a sixth one that I didn't even list down. And oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And it's almost more exciting to discover like, oh, there was a sixth route. Cool. Yeah. Now that's the newest yeah. one. So that's very exciting. Like, yeah. And I think for me as an ENFJ, that would be like stressful. And so mm -hmm. I think that's also like one of the things where it's like, um, we, our fun, not fun. I don't want to use the word fun, but kind of fun. Like our segues or uh, tangents are always somehow being wrapped back around. Like I, I find that even with like yeah. conversations, like I can bring up something and then it'll seem like we just went totally off course <laughs> and then I'll wrap it back around to where what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. And then people are like, oh yeah, we were talking about yeah, that. Yeah. But it, it seemed like we were like so long winded and we went like a completely different direction. Um, and sometimes people will think that like the ENFJ is going totally off track, but in actuality, in my opinion, I've seen it's like, no, 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 just continue to follow me. Trust me. It's, you're going to see how this actually helps us get even closer to what we were, what we were uh, going for from the beginning. Right. So I think that that's like a really big thing um, when it comes to like ENFJs versus like how the ENFP may uh, view that vision for a community or this pirate ship versus the uh, cruise ship, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> well, even just, even just in conversation, like I think that that's something that ENFJ naturally does, that desire to kind of wrap everything together. Whereas the ENFP has to be, we can do it, but it's a learned skill. Like I will never <laughs> accidentally start a conversation that uh, is very cohesive. Like I can, like even before we started this live stream, right? I was like, okay, there's three things I really want to try to hit, but I have to try to do that or mm -hmm. else 
it won't happen. I will just go off on a whole bunch of different tangents and it might accidentally connect back because we do have that extroverted intuition that's always connecting something to something else. So I get really excited when I start talking about something and then I start talking about something else and then my brain puts them together and I have all these realizations. That feels very exciting, but it's not something I intentionally orchestrate. It's just, it might happen accidentally. It might happen uh, because I'm being intentional about wrapping something together. But it will never be what my mind does on autopilot, which I think is more so how it works for the ENFJ. Like you guys on autopilot, think about how everything kind of fits into this big picture that is, um, it's like, I like to think of the difference between the way that ENFJs and or NI and any really look at the big picture as like, NI is kind of like in space looking at earth or like looking at like the box you know when we talk about being outside the box they're looking at all the how all the pieces fit together within it right. and it's like any is kind of out in space turned away from the box or like the earth or whatever looking at the possibilities in space so it's like we're always going outward like we're going more and more and more like where can we push a boundary and and find out something new versus ni is like where can we find order within what we already can observe and know like they want this kind of not detailed necessarily, but like cohesive big picture. Whereas the any big picture doesn't have to be cohesive at all. That's not that it's fun when it is, but it's not a necessity that it is. Like there can be a lot of mysteries that are still unsolved and that's fun. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, one of the questions actually that I wanted to ask you. Uh, so I know for me as an ENFJ, my uh, vision um, comes from my NI, like, okay, this is the kind of vision that I have and it's shaped from the people. So it's like the people around me can kind of shape that vision because if this is not what the people want or sometimes it is what the people want, but it's not what they need. And I think that's another big yeah. thing that people need to know about ENFJs, like at least healthy ones. We're not just all about like, this is what the people want. It's like, well, I know that you want this, but what you actually need is this, which could seem like a God complex of some sort, but that really is like our superpower. Like we are tapped into thinking all day, every day about these relationships and these dynamics and like what people need um, and in relationships and stuff like that. And so our my, my vision comes from that and I of thinking about like, okay, so what, what is, uh, what, what do I want not only for, you know, the people, but me included with the people and what would be like best for them. Mm -hmm. um, and if what is necessary for the people around me, uh, what it, what is needed for the people around me, if that changes, then my NI vision kind of like changes to that too. So it's influenced by my FE. For mm -hmm. you as an ENFP, would you say that your visions come from your FI or? Okay. Yeah. I think like my kind of purpose and passion comes from FI. It's mm -hmm. like, which direction I want to go in is usually in any kind of exploration. Like I'm like, oh, this would like an example I'll use is like the um, ENFP and INFP soul bootcamp programs that I started in the past year. It's like, right. That was born of an any excitement. Like I was like, oh, it'd be really fun to have a place where, you know, ENFPs and INFPs could come and learn all of these kind of wellness skills that are generally taught by TJs. Mm -hmm and figure out how to integrate them in their lives in a way that worked. And I had a million ideas about how to do that. But then what my FI really fixated on was like, what if we could bring people together and give them a place where they felt very accepted and very um, nurtured and very much like, oh, it's okay to kind of breathe and be who I am. And that's how I decided on like the method so that for a while they were, um, there was like a lot of group activity and now just because, um, of various reasons. It's like we're doing a self-study program and seeing how that goes. But mm -hmm. um, what my FI wanted was like, like I often think about what I would want. So it often comes not from kind of <laughs> surveying the public and be like, what do you guys want? I will do that. Like I'll do market research and stuff in my work. But um, right. in general, I think the most FI kind of saying that gets tossed out there a lot when it comes to this stuff is like, you know, be the person you wish you'd had when you were younger. Like that I think is a very... FI influenced saying, and I think it informs a lot of the work I do or a lot of the choices I make. Cause I think about like, oh, what have I needed and lacked in my life? And then you, you generally assume that's to some extent universalizable. Like it's not necessarily, but mm -hmm. if I perceive this lack of something in the world, whether it's like, you know, emotionally or tangibly or whatever, 
and then I go and create it. I'm just going to kind of assume other people also needed that. And um, it's not always the case, but I think that a lot of people who use FI in either the dominant or auxiliary position or even tertiary um, really operate under that stance. Like think about what I need and where I'm feeling emotionally um, unfulfilled or whatever it is. And then try to find people who will also relate to that. So it's kind of like FI is kind of like this fountain where it's like, okay, I'm going to make the fountain bigger and bigger. And then if other people want to come play in the fountain, that's cool. That's awesome. But if not, I'm just going to be over here being a fountain. Yeah, uh, total yeah I think FE, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, I think FE, like transitioning back to what you're saying, um, is more about first checking the temperature and then figuring out like what people need. Yeah, yeah. That makes total sense. Um, and, you know, a common trope uh, within the uh, Myers-Briggs community is always like, oh, FI is selfish. And thankfully, I feel like we've been tweaking it now. And it's like, yeah. no, 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 to be more specific, uh, I would say that FI is self-centered, um, which people would probably be like, oh, well, what's the difference? Like, well, self-centered means like, kind of like that whole thing, like you have to like, you know, put the mask on yourself before you can like, you know, the oxygen mask on yourself before you like put it on somebody else. And I see like FI as like the um, self healing and being self nurturing in some way, and in 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 learning how to do that for yourself, you then also know how to you also learn how to do it for other people. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, when I think of you know like what you just said, like that makes total sense because FI users, um, from my experience they've gotten really, really good at being able to understand their own, like, you know, inner feelings and morals and like what they want, like you said, like, you know, and then being able to understand other people's feelings as well from that sense. So like, I know that um, Joel Mark Witt and Antonia Dodge from Personality Hacker, they often speak about FI as kind of like a tuning fork where it's like, okay, they have spent so much time like looking into their own feelings and, you know, ideals and whatever, um, and understanding that on a very nuanced level that yeah. now when they meet somebody else, then they kind of like try to match it. Like they look yeah. within themselves yeah. and try to like match like, okay, this is the closest feeling to what that person might be feeling. Um, whereas I think for FE, I definitely don't do that. I did not have that kind of nuance, like that rich kind of nuance, like you guys do. Um, and so our thing, at least what it's been like for me is like, I, I will like legitimately feel what that person is feeling and kind of use that. But then once I'm like kind of like away from it, then it's kind of like, I'm not really like feeling that as heavily. And so therefore it's like, oh, I don't, I'm not really dwelling with what, you know, they felt unless if I'm just like thinking about it or something, but I can't feel it as heavily because I'm, I'm no longer in that presence. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yes. And I think that is the single biggest difference between ENFJs and ENFPs that people will notice very quickly. And I also want to quickly make the caveat, you could be neither of these types. If you're here because you're not sure if you're an ENFP or an ENFJ, I find very often there are other types, like something I like to kind of reference when I'm helping people figure out type is like, if you're really stuck between A and B, sometimes it's because the answer is C. Like it might, it's very often because neither of those things are correct, which is why neither feel like they fit like a glove. So you might want to look at other types, look at the other E, F types. If you, if you feel very sure of like, um, that, that you, one of these kind of archetypes, because there's a lot of similarities also between ESFJs and ESFPs within the ENFJ, ENFP, um, conundrum. But I think one thing that most people will relate to very quickly uh, or that it's very simple to self-reference on is how you're processing and experiencing your own emotions. So mm -hmm. I think when I talk to, um, let's say ENFPs who think that they're ENFJs, what normally gets them is when I explain, like <laughs> when, when an ENFJ explains how they experience emotions, it's so different. Like for ENFPs, we are so self-referencing. So at pretty much every point in time, I know exactly how I feel. And if I don't know exactly how I feel, I know that if I slowed down and just gave myself some alone time to process it, I would know exactly how I feel. So I'm very, very self-referencing in relation to my emotional experience. It almost feels like, like the metaphor I kind of accidentally always have for it in my mind is like, oh, when do I need to metabolize something? So it's like, I'll, I'll be out in the world doing things and gathering experiences and forming relationships. And it, it starts to feel almost like heavy in my like emotional stomach, if you will, if I haven't spent a lot of time 
alone thinking through like, what do these experiences mean to me? How do I feel about um, these new relationships I'm forming? How does it maybe fit in with the rest of my life or um, just generally stop and reflect about it? I start feeling like almost like if your stomach isn't processing your food properly, it would start feeling heavy. It starts feeling like that for me emotionally, like, oh, I need to go be alone and think about my feelings or else it feels like heavy in my in my emotional stomach. Um, and then once I've taken time, whether it's like going for a really long walk and listening to music or journaling, or I'm not a big journaler, but I know a lot of FI people are. Um, so that might be it for you. Or just literally like taking a day, sitting around. Sometimes I'll like write a blog post. I'll chat with some friends. I'll like kind of be turning over in my mind how I'm feeling until I reach like, yeah, now I kind of understand it very clearly. But it takes a lot of um, alone time and alone processing for me to do that versus I feel like for ENFJs, and correct me if I'm wrong, what helps you understand your feelings is actually like speaking about them to other people and being in the presence of other people so that you can kind of understand like how that relates back to you. But I would love to hear more about how you experience like emotional processing. Yeah, yeah. I think that that's definitely it. Like, you know, okay, let me share this with another person in a way so that that way um, it's almost like it's like the trope where it's like ENFJs are so good at giving other people um, good advice for their feelings or whatever, but then they suck at it for themselves. And I've noticed this a lot, like I've gotten a lot better at it now, but I literally had to like start throwing myself in a way to like, okay, what would Denzel tell Denzel? <laughs> I like legitimately like have to do that. Like, hey, if I, if somebody literally came to me with this problem, and or they're not feeling this way like how would you advise that person right um, and that has helped a lot but it doesn't help nearly as much as like being able to actually do it with somebody else where a lot of times i do just have to like go to somebody else and start telling them like hey this is what's going on or whatever whatever start you know saying it out loud and then having like a little bit of back and forth so that i can be like oh okay yeah that makes sense you know like Jamila, ISFP, my wife, very, she's great at that with me. Like just asking, like, hmm, and so what is this? And what about this? What about that? I would have never thought about that question for myself. I don't know, like that, I think maybe this or this, boom, 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 boom. And then she will kind of like, just not even kind of like fully just make sense of how I'm feeling about something. Um, but yeah, that's really interesting because I don't think that I really get that kind of like emotional indigestion um, however, uh, I think that my equivalent could be, which makes sense, you know, because the polarity of FE is TI, it's what do I think about something? And I'm like constantly like, you know, recalibrating and, you know, thinking like, okay, wait a minute, this is my, you know, personal uh, thoughts on this. And this is like the consistency of these logical data points or whatever, like what I believe about this, whatever the topic might be. Um, but this person thinks this, this is where it, you know, doesn't like, you know, where it contradicts. So which one of these are right? Okay, well, how will I figure out if that's right or if that's wrong? Like, I can't just go talk to somebody else about it because they might bring something else. So I have to like, look at this. And so I'm literally just always thinking about that kind of thing. And it's like, okay, and now from knowing this information, how will this then help the community that I'm now involved in? Because in order to be able to help the community, I have to have clean information for the community. I have to, you know, make sure that whatever I'm telling them is accurate, um, or at least to the best of my ability, accurate. Because if I'm giving false information, then it's spreading throughout the whole community. So I have to make sure I'm in my privacy and thinking like, okay, so this is right, this is wrong. This seems like it's right, at least for right now, until somebody presents something otherwise. Um, so this is probably safe to tell the community, mm, we should probably hold this and tinker it just a little bit more. And I feel like that's how most of my time is spent, um, especially like when I'm alone. <laughs> yeah. And okay. It's, there's again, so many interesting points in that because one, you talk about um, not wanting to release information into the community until you're sure that it's like you use the word uncontaminated, which is exactly <laughs> how I think FI looks at um, sharing its feelings. So it's yeah, like uh, something yeah. that always surprises me when I'm around FE doms is like, I'll meet them and they'll just start telling me how they're feeling. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> I would have to know you for four years before I told you like that much about how I'm feeling. But it's because you, you process feelings in a very 
literally extroverted way. So it's the same way that um, ENFPs use our thinking function. Like I will share what I think as soon as I think it, like I'll have a new thought and I'll immediately go tweet it. And it's because TE deals with what is self-evident. So I'm never too worried that like people will come out swinging because it's like, oh, either there's Either if I've made a mistake, it's very, it will be self-evident in my reasoning itself. So someone will just correct it and we'll go on with our days. But most likely, because I'm not thinking in a, in a system the way that ENFJs are, um, it's, it's more likely that what I'm tweeting is just kind of an observation of reality. So it's like, there's not that much to argue with usually. Like I, it, someone can have a different opinion about how something should be done or whatever. But like TE is a very self-evident function like it just references what is observable in the environment versus ti looks at like how does everything fit together so it's it's easier to make an error with ti which is yeah. why people with ti tend to like take a lot more time to think about how everything relates to each other before they share a thought yeah. um and that's how fi is about emotions because it's like oh i could be feeling a certain way but how do i know i'm not just think i'm not feeling that because of these 10 other things so i have to fit it into this kind of system of how i'm functioning emotionally and then when i share it I have to make sure I've really deeply understood um, like all the different reasons why I'm feeling that way and what it's related to. And I don't want to like, like, I don't want to be inaccurate about how I'm feeling when I speak to someone. So I won't talk about my feelings on more than a superficial level, at least when they first come up, I'll kind of go like, huh. And then I'll go home and process it. And then a while later I can share often in retrospect, oh, during this experience, I felt like this. Um, but I rarely am emotionally processing verbally in real time. However, there is kind of an ENFP equivalent, which is that we are verbal processors in our extroverted intuition. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> we will talk about like what we're evaluating and analyzing about our lives out loud forever. So it can feel sometimes like we're talking about our emotions, but when we look at it, we're really not like last week I had a decision to make, like I had basically some travel planned and I was feeling weird about like the fact that um it's a pandemic and I was like oh I kind of like I planned it a long time ago right and I was like oh it'll mm, things will be different by January of course they're not <laughs> so I, I was making the choice whether to to go through on this travel plan or not and I ended up not but I called my best friend and just talked for like three hours and was <laughs> like okay here's all the things that could happen if I go here's all the things that could happen if I don't go um and to make so to make a decision we'll often use people as kind of sounding boards but I'm not actually talking about my feelings in that feelings. scenario yeah. i'm talking about the possibilities and i might say things like oh i would feel guilty if i got someone sick i would feel um sad if i didn't get to go see my community but it's not a lot of emotional sharing it's more like like barfing out all of our thoughts around something yeah. and then and then talking ourselves to our emotional conclusion, which is like, yes, now that I've looked at all the possibilities, I just know, I just know that I feel better about not going. Like, I didn't even have to communicate that. I just had the conversation. Oh, I feel that feeling in my body. I know it, it's done. Now I've made my decision, but it's not the same as Effie sharing all of its different feelings and then looking for feedback on them and then figuring out like what, what that is. It's a very different process. Yeah. That I think that's a really, really big, uh, distinction between ENFJ and ENFP or FI versus FE in general. Yeah. Um, and it shows once again, like even that polarity of like, you know, FI and TE versus like FE and TI. Um, Cause yeah, even just literally this morning, like I was scrolling through my Twitter drafts mm -hmm. and I honestly, I knew I had drafts, but I did not know I had that many. Yeah. And as I was scrolling through them. I was like, wow. Which is another, you know, thing that I was like thinking about. Um, I think that ENFJs are just like incredibly meticulous. Like I get called that like a lot. Um, and I think that's also why maybe sometimes like they can appear as fake, but in like, I, it really isn't like a fakeness. It's just all about like, I think a lot about timing. Like when is the right time to post this? When is the right time to present this information to this person? When is the right time to do this? When is the right time to do that? Um, and so with the same thing, like with drafts is like, okay, kind of like you said, like I had this thought, whoa, but then I'm like reading the room. It's like, is this the right time to tweet that? Or, and then TI is like, have you fact checked this? Like, yeah. <laughs> no, what if you tweet this and then it's actually wrong. And then all of a sudden this INTP 
um, points like pokes holes in it. Now your FE is like, oh no, my credit card. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to like delete the tweet and you have to go back and you're like, man, I wish I never tweeted that kind of thing. So it's like all of these drafts are like, you know, I have to like go through and think like, not only is this accurate to be able to send out to the community and the group so that, you know, like for TI and then for FE's sake, I won't lose faces like credibility or, you know, whatever, or being embarrassed by somebody poking holes in it but also NISE, like, is this the right time to, which is, um, I think is very interesting because one time you talked about how NESI, at least from how I was understanding it, it doesn't really look necessarily at like timing because NE, the way I'm envisioning it is like, there's portals everywhere, endless portals. Like there's always opportunity, there's opportunity everywhere that you look, just jump here, just jump here. Whereas like for me, the way I view NISE, it's like there's a small window of opportunity that you have to wait, 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 wait now. And then you you jump in it. And it's like that, like when you find that, that's where everything is like the most poignant, you know? Um, and then when you have FE there, then it's like, okay, that window of opportunity is now also based off of like, you're, you're looking at the social, like the social temperature, like, is it, mm, you probably shouldn't tweet that right now when there's um, riots going on at the Capitol, <laughs> you know, or you should probably not like, you know, do this right now. You should probably not promote this or whatever. Like you have to like read, like, how is this going to be received? Is this the right time? Is that the right time? Oh, this is the perfect time. You have to do this on that day or else you're, you've missed your opportunity almost forever, almost forever because sometimes that opportunity may come back around but now you have to wait even longer. And then you start to think like, dang, well, if I had just jumped in the first time, then, you know, I wouldn't have had to wait, you know, and had to like push back that time scale. Whereas like for um, NESI users, I've seen that like, they don't really seem nearly as concerned with that kind of timing. I would say almost not at all. And it's, <laughs> yeah. it's funny because it's like hearing you talk, I think the only time I've even learned to be concerned about timing is if I've made the mistake of not factoring that in, which I'm very prone to do. Like, like you said, my worldview is very like, there are always possibilities. So let's look at what possibility makes the most sense right now. And then once we get to the end of that possibility or to a new place with that possibility, there'll be more possibilities. And then we'll pick the possibility that makes the most sense then. But there've been maybe a few times in my life where I've kind of gone for something and been like, oh, that wasn't the right time for that. Like that just didn't, I didn't, it, maybe I didn't wait long enough to let a certain idea boil and like come to fruition before I tried to act on it or, or whatever it was, or I didn't give other people enough time to get on board with something. Um, so there've been a few instances I can think of in my life. And I really mean maybe like two where I think, <laughs> oh, the timing wasn't right. For <laughs> and I and then- like the INFJs listening are probably like, ugh, cause yeah. the one <laughs> they are so much about timing too. And then with the SE inferior, it's like, oh no, I've missed it, you know, but. Yeah, I literally, <laughs> I literally can think of two times ever where I look back and I'm like, oh, maybe that, that was the wrong timing for that. But what's funny is like, then it even becomes an SI thing for me. So it's not like, oh, then I get this running theme of timing in my life afterwards. It's just like, oh, if I come across a similar opportunity, I'll just assume like, don't do it at all. Because, because yeah. I think like, oh, the last time I, I messed it up and then I'll, <laughs> I'll almost just get paralyzed in that area overall, mm -hmm. because SI is not, especially when it's inferior, it's not great at distinguishing like what the context is. It just kind of goes, this didn't work last time. It's not going to work this time. But and I have to consciously be like, no, let's think about timing this time. Let's think about all these different variables that NI naturally thinks about, but um, SINE doesn't. So it's like, yeah, timing for me is something that barely exists in my worldview. And when it does, it exists in a very inaccurate way. Like it's just like, like kind of taking one thing and applying it to something else without context. And like, yeah, it's, it's very rarely on my radar. That is so interesting. I can't, I can't imagine um, life like that. And I think that's where the judger in ENFJ yeah. like comes yeah. from because it's like paying so much attention to that and it's not nearly as like free spirited. Um, but it's also not like rigid, like I said, you know, like with yeah. that ship where it's like, oh yeah, we didn't know that that, cause then that's where SE tertiary comes in. Like, oh yeah, look, there's a little pathway over there. We can go explore that as long as after we explore it, it's still somehow like taking us in the same direction. It's still going, um, it's, it, it's along the way and it's not just like some 
arbitrary path that might lead us elsewhere. Like how you talked about like that sixth option. No, <laughs> we don't <laughs> want, we want to continue to go toward that first option. Um, maybe, maybe there might be a second option, but usually we've taken so much time to figure out one of those, like, like about that first option, then we invest all of our thought, energy and time into it. So that whole idea of like manifestation, even like you're kind of obsessing over this NI vision and idea that now it seems like everything in your life is, is a current that's like pushing you during like down that stream toward that end vision. Mm -hmm. um, and that's actually another question that, you know, going off of that, that I wanted to ask you, I've often thought of NE and NI as kind of like both want to explore and find treasure. Um, but NE is like, so NI is kind of like in the plane and it sees X marks the spot and it's like, okay, that's it. And it wants to go to that X and dig more and more and more. Like yep. and it wants to get to like the center of the earth with that. Um, whereas like NE is like, oh yeah, there goes X marks the spot, but man, it's so fun flying here. Like let's, yeah. let's just <laughs> yeah. keep on flying and NI is yeah. like, what are you doing? The the treasure is right there. It's going to be much more fun digging. And then and he's like, but if we start digging, that's kind of boring because it's so much more fun to fly. There could be other X's. And then and I was like, what do you mean there could be other X's? That it, it's right there. <laughs> Let's dig to that. The more time that we're spending flying around, as fun as that might be to you, we are wasting time uh, where we could be, you know, getting, you know, like yeah. to the meat of something, which it's funny that I use that, you know, term, like we're wasting time because now I'm also assuming that any is like, well, what is time? What is wasting yeah. time? We can always circle right back to that X and it's not going anywhere. Yeah. 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 No, it's exactly like that. And it's okay. So first thing I was thinking is, um, I hope she's cool with me sharing this. I think she would be, but my partner is uh, an ISFP, which they have NI tertiary. So it's like, they do plan their future using NI. Like that's the function they use for future planning. Um, and we were having a conversation the other day where she was like, oh, we never, like, we don't plan, you never make plans for our future. Like, do you not, like, what, what's that about? Like, do you not want me in your future? And I'm like, what am I, what are you talking about? I have <laughs> six different plans every single day that I share with you for the future. But like, and I doesn't recognize it as a plan if it's not like directed, right? So it's like, because I'm not like taking all those plans and being like, okay, here's where we'll be in five years. Here's where we'll be in 10 years. Here's where we'll be in 15 years. She doesn't recognize it as a plan. But to me, I'm like, oh, I have 10, 10,000 different things I would like us to do together in the future. And to me, that's a plan. Like, it's like, I see you in all of those plans. It's just like, they're not cohesive and they're never going to be like, it's, that's never going to be how my brain works. Right. And that's, obviously interpersonally that's something like you can you can find ways to converge like the any and the ni plans but definitely it's like what's exciting to us is flying over looking at where all the x's are marked and being right. like oh that's i like knowing that's there i like knowing that's there and then what we'll often do is like take note like we want to kind of get a bird's eye view take note of where all the x's are and then maybe form a plan around like okay we're going to hit this x then this x then this x but it's not particularly interesting to, to drill too deeply into any of them, maybe some of them. Um, but we're always going to want different kind of like a lot of variety in what we're pursuing. So I like to think of it even as like, I took um, a workshop with uh, Dario Nardi talking about his book on self leadership and um, like through the lens of cognitive functions. And he was talking about how if you don't value NI, you just kind of have to find a way to make it support the dominant processing function that you are using. So for me, it's NE. And that means maybe looking at common themes in your life and figuring out like, okay, I do want to build in this area. Like for me, I know there will always be some interest in typology and self-growth and personal, um, I'm just like knowing yourself. And so how do I kind of draw a common thread through that and then give myself a lot of different jumping points off of that thread? So it's like the way I look at my career now is kind of like a tree where it's like, okay, the, the like trunk of the tree is, you know, my love for all the things I love for, for bringing people together, for like exploring personal development, for getting to know myself and other people better, which has been a consistent theme that my SI can recognize has always been there in my life since I was, a, you know, as, as long as I can remember, that's been a passion. And then there's going to be all of these branches that are the routes I take along the way. Like for a while, it'll be, you know, doing this coaching program for a while. It'll be writing a book for a while. It'll be just going on Twitter and engaging a lot and reading a lot of books and, and talking to the community, but it will always come back to these core things. 
Um, and that's kind of rooted in SI and FI for me. Like I can, I look back over my life and go, what have I always loved? What have I always felt connected to? And that's how I know what to center myself in. And then NE will be all of these branches and leaves and, and the fruit that grows on those branches and leaves. Um, but there's always going to be another branch and I'm always going to perceive a million different branches I could grow. And that's, that's cool too. That's just how it works. Um, but that's kind of like how I view the any FI or, or any TI is probably similar, um, psyche. It's like, it's like a, a tree with a lot of different, like variances, like, and then kind of sidebars. <laughs> yeah, that makes total sense. That makes total sense. That's actually really beautiful to think of that way. Um, and then it, yeah, definitely also aligns with that whole X marks the spot idea and just like flying around like i'm i'm definitely seeing how it makes sense now from like an enfp perspective because like i said like you know things like that for me it's just always been like what are you doing <laughs> yeah and it, it's it's just like and i've been in conversations with um ne users before where for me in my head the x marks the spot is what I think, like, I, I would like to believe that I'm looking for empirical truth mm -hmm. um, and uh, not just like, oh, you know, you know, let's just think of this theory, let's just think of that theory or like, you know, like whatever, like, cause that could, you know, make sense and it could work and it could be fun to explore that. But like, is it empirical though? Is it like, you know, what the actual potentially like as much as we can observe absolute truth is so that's what the X marks the spot is, at least for me. Um, however, I am wondering, like, so then as an ENFP, because uh, I know that, you know, ENF, there has to be ENFPs as well who are also looking for like empirical truth and stuff. And like what you also said about like, oh, X marks the spot, like looking at all of the different X's and then seeing like, okay, we're going to visit that, we're going to visit that. Um, with, with ENFJs, there or NFJs in general, NJs in general, they're most known for being like a visionary in the sense that they, their NI is able to see exactly what's going to play out. Like that one most pop plausible thing that's going to play out, which is again, my empirical truth or X marks the spot. Um, how is that for the NE user, especially like as an ENFP? Like, would you say that, oh no, I know that that's the X marks the spot. Like that's the one that's most likely going to play out, but I just don't feel like thinking too much about it um or it's like actually you know what's going to most play out i just have fun continuing to generate more possibilities of what might play out and then i can adapt when it happens yeah so that's that's an awesome question and there's a really interesting thread on twitter about this a while back i think it was um megan lavota i can't remember if she started it or if she just said the comment that i'm remembering the most um but she was saying or someone on that thread was saying that they're surprised that NE is never surprised. Like, I believe it was Megan who was saying this. She was, who also has a great YouTube channel that if you guys aren't following, you should go check out. But she was saying like, oh, I'll be kind of so focused on one thing that I think is likely to happen. And then if something different happens, I'll be really surprised. But the NE valuing friends I have will be like, oh yeah, that, that happened, of course. Like, and I think that's very reminiscent of the fact that any considers all the possibilities, but doesn't put a lot of thought into, they can put thought into it, but they don't put as much thought into which one's most likely. Um, I think that's less true for ENTPs and INTPs because they have TI, which is like all about calculating probability and likelihood. But um, especially for ENFPs and INFPs, we think of everything that could happen, but we're not very concerned with figuring out which one is most likely because we're like, well, we'll find out when we see what happens. Um, <laughs> Like we're just like well there's no there's not a lot of use in trying to predict things because we'll just know when we get to the future like it will it will become evident when we get there so we will think a lot about a lot of different things that could happen because it's fun it's like a playground to think of all the different things that could happen and then for that reason like we're not often surprised by things that do end up happening because it's like yeah that was always one of the possibilities um but we're not too um, attached to any one possibility as the most likely one. So mm -hmm. it's not something that we put a lot of time into focusing on because again, we don't plan in the same way. Like I think another reason why um, NI naturally makes predictions, maybe not why, but it's like it's related is because they also plan around those things. So it's like, if you're making a long-term plan, of course you have to look at the, it's like looking at the weather forecast, right? You need to know if you're going to wear like a rain jacket tomorrow, or if you're going to wear a tank top. And it's like, 
and he isn't really making long-term plans in the same way. So it's kind of like, oh, well, I don't need to know the forecast because it's like, I'll just figure out when I get there, what I'm going to do and like, look at the different options. So it's like, it's not as concerned with figuring things out. It's just not, um, it doesn't capture, like our, our attention won't stay there for very long. Yeah. And it's very handy because NE in itself is capable of adapting yeah. in that environment like because for me it's like well I won't have my raincoat so I can't just adapt now I have to suffer and be all you know broody in the rain whereas like an E will somehow just find something like I can't even think of like you know how that would work so it's well, so like I need to be able to think <laughs> it's like to follow the metaphor I think it's it's kind of interesting because it's like and I will have, an, this changes for any as we grow up. Like another thing Dario Nardi said to me once that I thought was really funny was like, he's like around middle age, you start seeing ENFPs who have standards for the first time. But it's like <laughs> to us, there is this element of like being caught in the rain is no better or worse than being caught in the sun. It's just a different experience. So it's like, if I'm That's getting crazy. wet, I'm getting wet and I'll learn something from being wet, you know? And it's like, if I'm, if I'm, if I happen into wonderful weather, then it's time to celebrate. And if I happen into bad weather, it's time to grow and, and to, to learn. So it's like, we're, we're just kind of interested in sampling all of the experiences, positive or negative. So we're not necessarily as concerned with like, oh, am I going to have the right things to cope with this scenario when I get there? Because we're like, well, it will be an opportunity to learn them if we don't. Um, yeah, I had another point that I've immediately forgotten, but <laughs> yeah, well, for everyone watching now, you can clearly see the difference between like, oh, like I have definitely spoken to people who are like, you know, I used to be, well, this is not people, technically one person said this, but I know that a lot of people share this philosophy. <laughs> like I used to be an ENFJ, but now my P has become a little bit more and all of that. And it's like, no, 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 that's not how this works. And then your whole cognitive function stack life change. But I think that we can like clearly see here, like the difference in that like judger versus like perceiver mentality that even though like I see myself as like a judger, but I also like see, like I take pride a lot of times in my spontaneous moments, like even on my YouTube channel, like I have um, a running theme for my, some of my videos called spontaneous speaking videos, where it's like, oh, a thought or something popped up in my head. Let me just pull out my iPad wherever I'm at, flip it up and just start talking it out with my YouTube subscribers. Um, and I call that spontaneity, you know, and it's like, yeah, I'm so proud of myself. But then Jamila, who's a perceiver, ISFP, she's like, you just love like relishing your like spontaneity or whatever, but you're not like, <laughs> like, like, it's just further shows how you're not really spontaneous. Yes. Like you, you just, and I thought that was funny. And then I, of course, watch your videos, Heidi. And one thing that I found was interesting was that, because for me, that's coming from my tertiary SE, I believe. Yeah. Um, and for you, you uh, it seemed like, I think we both have this in common where we think of our cognitive functions as like that inside out kind of, yeah. you know, yeah. and everything. So when I was watching your videos, I thought it was interesting to see that like TE, which is your tertiary seems to be the one that's like, guys, <laughs> like, like, it seems like the one that you're most proud of. Yes. Um, and not necessarily brag on, but like, that's kind of like the idea that I was getting like, oh, like, we're pretty like, like this, I'm, I'm the mature one, even though I'm the tertiary. And for SE, I guess that's what I'm talking about. Like, yeah, see how, sponta how spontaneous here is like, that's not really spontaneous. <laughs> no, it's, oh my God, it's so true. It's so true. Cause it's like, if some, uh, so this is another thread that someone posted on Twitter and I cannot remember and I feel so bad cause I can't remember who posted it, but it was so good. Cause they were like, a good way to type is to think about um, how people want other people to perceive them versus what people actually come to them <laughs> for. And it's like, uh -huh. I want my, I have tertiary TE. So ENFPs are often very proud of themselves for like when they're organized, when they have their shit together, when they're kind of like, um, you know, figuring things out and orchestrating things and making things happen. Like ENFPs often want to be known for their um, productivity and their ability to like, like get shit done. But that's not our natural 
way of functioning. Like we don't, we're not compulsively getting shit done. We're doing it once in a while and then being really proud of ourselves. And we want everyone to see it. And we want everyone to look at us and be like, oh, they're so, like if someone calls me organized or if someone calls me like a person who's like really productive or like, you know, has their shit together. I'm like, yes, I am the goddess of productivity. Tell me more. But it's like, that's not who I am. Like that's because that's not naturally who I am. It's what I like people to see me as. Um, but ENFPs kind of know that that's, that's something they have to develop. Like if you're honest with yourself as an ENFP, you know that you're naturally not organized. You have to kind of build that skill. Um, and you do build it and it starts to feel good and natural and more normal. But if you're super proud of how organized you are, you're pretty, like, you might be a P because it's like the things that come naturally to you, you don't need to feel like a sense of like, I want external validation for this. Cause you just know, you know, it's, it's not like as an ENFP, I don't feel any pride over the fact that I'm very like emotionally self-aware or whatever. Like, it's like, I just spend so much time thinking about my own emotions that it's like, I don't need anyone to validate that in me. I just do it. I do it whether anyone notices or not, but I do need people to validate me for the things that don't come as naturally. So it's like, even thinking about what you want other people to think of you as that you kind of know you're not is probably a good um, indication of what your type might be. So how does that come out for you then with SI? Cause I know like for me, um, I do like the idea of like, you know, like, you know, like being like, like a, a, my ability to adapt. That's mm -hmm. what it is for me. Because I think that a lot of times, especially like, like, you know, TE for an ENFP, like that's, it's good to be seen as that. But then I think a lot of times, like, like we were talking about like with the ENFJ profile and everything, I think that we get talked about a lot for our SE, like, oh yeah, they don't think long enough about their plans. They don't, you know, they just do this. It, it, it makes us seem a little bit more like, um, what's the word? Almost like a FESE loop kind of thing. It's like, um, and so then it's almost like, okay, I do kind of want to be seen as like spontaneous, but it's not making me seem spontaneous. These profiles are making me seem as if I don't put thought into whatever I'm doing and that I'm more, there's a specific word impulsive right. and it's like no I'm not I'm anything but impulsive like you know at least like he's personally yeah. speaking people who know me like they know I'm not impulsive I'm, I can be spontaneous in my own way but impulsive is a different kind of sense and so what I'd like for people to see for me is like ability to adapt and maneuver mm -hmm. when plans don't go the way that I want so that's where it's like white with my SE and that's how I'd want people to perceive me but then my TI inferior, I want people to also perceive me as like, oh, he knows his stuff. And I can, I can actually like whatever information that he gives me, I can trust that even if it may not be right, it can, it makes sense. It's like able to hold itself up. And that if I present to him new information, then he will openly look at it and like, you know, think about it and see the consistency there. And he's adopting like, you know, truth and everything. So I can trust this man as a teacher. Um, and so that's kind of like how I'd want to be like perceived, like when it comes to like these last two functions. Um, but for you as an ENFP, like you already described like TE, how is that for you also like with SI? Well, it's interesting because as you're saying that I'm wondering if all of us just feel a little bit not seen in our inferior or in our introverted functions. Cause it's like, mm. people only see what's on the outside. Right. So it's like for ENFPs, they might see um, all of our idea generation and then all of our like plans in our any and our TE. And for you, they might see like all of your people orientation and then all of the things you do with your SE, but they miss out on that NI and that TI. Mm. And it's like, mm. that can be very true for us as well. I think like where the ENFPs tend to feel not seen is that we have, a very, very deep and rich world of reflection that is, I've never seen properly conveyed in type profiles, to be honest. Like, because when you combine introverted feeling and introverted sensing, it's like, mm -hmm. we spend so, so, so much time. And this is often the difference between ESFP and ENFP as well. Just thinking about the past and thinking about things we did in the past and how we felt about them and how they could have gone differently. Like there's almost an obsessive nonstop real of our past lives playing inside of our minds all the time and that doesn't get seen very often in enfps um, or acknowledged or like it's not something we interact with other people about but it's something that gets missed as part of the essence of who we are um, and i don't think we necessarily want people to always know that or see that but it's very 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 present 
and we can get anchored in past experiences because of SI. Um, like I was tweeting the other day about how the TV show Tales of the City, um, which is a remake of an old show, I never watched the old one, but the main character, I believe, um, one of the main characters is an ENFP, probably a six wing seven, so she has like her own distinct flavor, but the premise of the show, of the, re the reboot of it, is that this ENFP character has left this community she was a part of in like, I guess her 20s or something, gone off, built a life somewhere else, married someone, and then in the first episode of the reboot of the series, she's returned, she's on a plane returning to this old community because she's like, I just spent my entire new life for like 20 years or however long it's been thinking about my old life and how much more fulfilling it was and replaying like the story of my old life in my head. And I was like, this is so, so ENFP, like just getting so anchored in a point in the past when you were really happy and almost like obsessing about it at the detriment of your current life and your current experiences, because we don't have SE. So we don't adapt to our current experiences in the same way. We get very anchored in what's worked before. And so this entire series is about this woman like returning and just being like, I'm going back to my old life, which I think is a very, um, it's a thing that's very unique to people who use SI and FI. Um, SI gives you that anchoring. FI gives you that story in your head about it. Um, where it's almost like you're watching a movie all the time. And I think that those are, that's a part of the ENFP's life that I never see talked about or like very rarely see talked about, but it's so, so core to our identities. That's beautiful. Like that, that, yeah, that makes, that shows so much of how ENFPs operate. And I don't relate to that. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly right and it's like you wouldn't it's like that's the thing because it's like there are such specific things that are just so poignantly like specifically fi and there's so many things that are so specifically ni that i don't relate to and it's like when you you know take the hood off the car and look inside it's totally different for the enfj and enfp uh, wow that's yeah that's awesome i think that that's definitely going to be very helpful for a lot of people who are torn <laughs> between the two because I really, I really can't. Yeah, I don't think I, I can think of, yeah, an, of an NFJ who has that kind of um, nostalgia. Yeah, but I can definitely see that with my younger sister, who's mm. an INF. Yeah. And oh, yeah. I, They've got it bad <laughs> in that, yeah. that department. I can see that with other INFPs that I know. Um, and I can see that with two ENFPs that I know. Wow. Like, yeah, I, I, that, that's, that's just such a beautiful way that you put it. Um, and I feel like this is really cool because it's again showing how on the outside, we really do look the same, like even in our excitement and everything. Um, but then internally, things are so different. I wanted to bring up possibly one more thing. Yeah, so I was um, about to say, like, yeah. anything we didn't get to for you. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, Cause I was, I was just now rethinking about like, you know, how you said with FE, we have to talk through our feelings like other people, stuff like that. Um, one time I was speaking to an INTJ, an INFJ and an ISFP, my wife. Mm -hmm. um, and so we were describing like, like pretty much the INTJ said something like, uh, I said something along the lines of like communication is difficult um and the infj agreed but the intj was pretty much like communication is like easy in a way which is like interesting because i'm the enfj she's the intj so it's like really is it really like easy and I, somehow we got to this metaphor or this analogy where um we were talking about bowling and long story short i said that i'm focused on you know making sure that i get a strike so i have to, so i'm like really focused on the pins and the bowling ball and like, you know, everything to like make sure that whatever I'm communicating is communicated properly, like tactfully, within the right information, all of that so that it lands with the other person correctly. Whereas the INTJ said, oh yeah, I'm not really focused on getting a strike. I'm just focused on making sure that pretty much like my technique is right. Like that I, um, that I launched the ball correctly, which, you know, will most likely get her the strike still but it's kind of like for her what she was trying to say was that i'm just so focused on being able to expel 
whatever it is that I'm feeling accurately. And it's not up to me how other people um, receive however I feel. I'm just happy that I expressed how I feel. Um, and yeah. Jamila, the ISFP was like, oh, that's interesting. And she kind of like also agreed with that to an extent, but then she's a feeler dominant. So it's like, oh, well, but then me and the INFJ, we were like, oh yeah, no, for us, it's like, it's not just about expressing like, how we feel because again, we don't really even know like how we feel. <laughs> But, but it's like, I want to make sure that everything that I'm communicating to you is like, even like throughout this conversation, I, I can't help but keep on asking like, did that make sense? Did that make sense? And I think that's also why we can become like long winded because like, I'm really trying to make sure I get the strike. Like, do you understand what I'm saying? And let me see if I can explain it this way. Let me see if I can explain it that way. So as an ENFP, how would you say that is for you? When it's it so funny because when you when you talk about like long windedness, I have an INFJ friend who always talks about how she's so long winded and she's like, it drives me crazy. But like, I just can't like she's always talking about how there's this thing, this essence she's trying to convey. And so she just has to say it 12 different ways or else she feels like she hasn't properly, you know, contextualized that thing. And maybe they're going to misinterpret it as something else. And so I yeah. think NI really has that desire to like properly convey something, which is what makes them long winded. NE is a long winded because we're just talking out our thoughts till we arrive at, at what we think. So it's like, we're both long-winded, but it's directed for the for the NJs. Like they're trying to get to a certain point versus any yeah. is trying to formulate new points when they're talking. Yep. So we're not trying to get, like, sometimes it helps us get to like some realizations along the way, but um, in general, we're not trying to get at anything specifically, but, but uh, <laughs> communication, it depends. Cause it's like, oh, if what am I communicating right it's like if I'm communicating let's say something in a work sense where something needs to be done that's very easy because it's just objective you use your te this needs to be done please do it if it's um communicating like a philosophy or a, an idea or a thought um I will be prone to explaining it multiple different ways but I find that it's fun if it's communication in the realm of like feelings um it's not, I don't find it particularly difficult. Sometimes it can be painful for me to extract my FI and make it seen and known. Like I want to keep it inside. Um, uh, so if I'm sharing how I'm feeling, it can be painful. Like I don't want to, but I don't worry too much about like the strike. Like I'm just kind of like, okay, there, I said it. <laughs> like if I feel like there's something I needed to say. Got you. And I was going to just, sorry to interrupt. But I was just asking uh, like, and that's not, would you say that that's also influenced by Enneagram 8? I would. Or I would. would you say like it's like an FI thing like yeah, all together yeah. as well? Yeah, I think it's an FI thing, but I think it's a lot more so for me because like I'm an Enneagram 8. I, do, I really don't want to share my feelings. Like I, I have almost no desire to do that until it's like, okay, I have to or else like, like it's extremely important in this relationship or whatever um, that I share how I'm feeling. So I, I do know that other ENFPs will want to share how they're feeling more. Um, but again, I think for them, it's more about putting it out there. And it's like, they don't need to, because we're not thinking about influence in the same way that FI or FE is. Like, I think FE is always thinking about influence, even if it's not intentional, like not like, oh, I want to influence someone to do something. It's like, what influence will the words that I say have over other people's thinking, I think is a very prominent thought uh, for those in the FETI axis, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah. but that's not as yeah. prominent for me. Like, I'm just kind of like, I'm saying what I think I always, I'm just saying what I think. And then you think whatever you want, you know, like I'm just sharing it in case it helps you in any way, or, or if it's, you know, a thing that needs to be shared in our, because of our relationship to one another. Um, but I'm not thinking about how is the way I'm thinking going to impact how someone else is thinking. I'm just thinking, well, this is what I think and they can think whatever. And if they think along the same lines as me, that's cool. And we'll probably chat about it or vice versa. If they think something different but I'm not concerned with the influence of what I'm saying. Um, I may be concerned with the impact. So if I want something to happen, I'll think, what can I say that will make this thing happen? What can I share that will make this outcome be the outcome? But yeah, I'm not worried about influence in terms of um, the way I talk almost ever, unless it's particularly like I'm setting that intention. That is yet another huge distinction, <laughs> I yeah. believe for anyone who is watching, because for me as an ENFJ, I guess speaking for myself, but I, I'd feel like other ENFJs would definitely relate. I'm always, once again, like thinking about that influence. I'm always thinking about that strike. Like, oh man, there's one pin left. Like, what did I, 
how did I not communicate that properly or like, you know, and that's like for anything, you know, like whether it is, you know, I, I can't, I can't always just, you know, throw it like, you know, just throw the ball, or like look at the technique. I think it's harder for me maybe in that sense. And it's just easier to focus more on the pins and somehow I'll get that. I don't know if that translates properly in the um, metaphor, but, um, but yeah, like I, I definitely get what you're saying though. And I feel like that's a really, that's definitely a big distinction once again for like ENFP, ENFJ. Um, well, it's, yeah. it's like, it's, I even think of it through the lens of like, and we'll, we'll wrap up in a minute here. I mean, we could just talk for like seven hours, but right. um, yeah, I was thinking about that specifically the other day. Cause I, I don't really use it anymore, but I went through a period for like six, six months or so where I was just writing, like I was writing a lot and I was posting a lot of my writing on Instagram. And I would get messages sometimes from people being like, oh, but this doesn't apply to me in this situation. And I'd be like, well, of course, like not everything anyone says is gonna apply to everyone. I'm just sharing my thoughts. And it's like, you should think whatever you want. Like, I'm not telling you to think this. Like I was like, I'm like taken aback when people think that I'm telling them to think something. Cause I'm like, no, I'm just sharing what I think and what my like life philosophies are. But I really, really don't think it's gonna apply to everyone or expect it to apply to everyone. Um, cause there's context with everything, but that's a, a classic case of me not thinking like, oh, other people are interpreting this as it is universal, whereas I'm not. Um, and I, I assume that the premise is that it's not universal, but other people who, who operate under a different worldview might think like, oh, if someone's sharing something, they assume it to be universal. So I should yeah. think about it into, and integrate it into my worldview. And I'm just kind of over here like, no, don't do that. <laughs> like, yeah. think, think first. And this isn't to say that like, oh, um, other types like lack critical thinking, but it's like, oh, it's where there are different bases, bases for the critical thinking that like um, the FETI axis versus the TEFI axis has. So it's like, it's interesting. That's a whole other conversation, but it's like, yeah. but what we're assuming other people are thinking critically about, like you and I, we probably have two completely different bases for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And just like what we were saying before, like, you know, because if I maybe I didn't, if maybe if I assume that everybody operated like me, then it's like, all right, well, you're posting this. So clearly you are saying that, you know, it's like universal because I wouldn't have posted that right, until exactly. I maybe yeah. assumed that it's universal. And even if I wasn't necessarily sure, you know me, Heidi, I always like put a disclaimer, but like, but what are your thoughts? What are your, yeah, so yeah, that I can yeah. like, feel like I'm actually still figuring this out, but I'm looking for the universal. And then what I've realized, especially with those who have TE, it's like, okay, I'm stating this and it sounds like I'm speaking it as if it's objective and universal, yes. but honestly, like, no, you're always welcome to uh, come and like, you know, shuffle with me. And it's just like, but you didn't make it sound like <laughs> you were open to that. It's like, because you're just supposed to assume that. And it's like, but how am I supposed to assume that if you shared something that you didn't necessarily like really dig into and make it seem like universal is like because so yeah <laughs> like yeah. that's exactly because like, we're arriving at like landing points where we're like okay i've landed on this thought for now but it's like we know that that's not that's not the whole system but we're just kind of right. like oh i'm just identifying this as a landing point but there's a million other ones and maybe you're at a different one so it's like yeah it's a very funny um it's a very funny difference because it's like that's so true like tefi in either order i think sounds we speak very decisively a lot of the time but yes. it's just, but we're not as decide like we're not feeling as decisive maybe as people assume we are so it's like was, like i'll read my own twitter and be like oh my god if i read this i would think i was like like i would just think i was so opinionated about all these things but i'm like well, these are all just passing thoughts i've had half of them i don't even think are true anymore i now see great <laughs> nuance in or whatever but it's like i just speak very decisively so that gets not communicated um but yeah i think that's very much like feti will even correct itself a lot while speaking whereas tefi will just be like it's like this because we think in generalities <laughs> in that sense so yeah it's very different communication styles for sure yeah 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 okay and just in conclusion i guess like the last thing that was like okay we have to throw this one in there heidi one time gave an analogy often as she does beautiful analogies of FI versus FE. Um, so just in case for whatever reason you have not been following, FI is what ENFPs have and then yeah, FE never, is what- Yeah. 
<laughs> but um, uh, she said that you might actually have to share it again, the well analogy. Mm. So it's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way I kind of think of FE versus FI is like, if you are sitting at the bottom of a well, it's like FI is gonna be the function that crawls down and like sits with you. And it's like, I'm here with you. We're experiencing this together. You know, I remember another time I was in a dark well and there's just a lot of like empathizing for what you're feeling versus FE is gonna be the one who like throws a ladder down and is like, I will help you out of the well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, yeah. yeah. And I thought that that was like a very quick, easy way to like, again, of course, you know, you can always like nuance it out better. Not saying that FE could never do that, but I think that the the situations where FE would do that is I tend to think of FE as uh, somebody described it, my friend, my INFJ friend described it as social anesthesia and then TI as the scalpel. And I was like, that is beautiful. That like is that's, so that's funny. literally, yeah, that's literally how I see it. And so for me, um, the only way that I would climb down into that well is if I knew that the ladder for you to get you out would have to include right. me coming down there with you. So it's like, okay, my whole goal is to get you out of here. Because <laughs> personally, as an FE user, it's like, I do not see the point in you sitting down there. <laughs> and I definitely do not see the point in me sitting down there with you. But I do see the point if I have to sit down there with you for like 20 minutes before you're ready to come up. So as long as we can, as long as we're going to come up, then, you know, that's cool. Whereas I, I, I feel like FI is not even, I feel like I'm positive that FI is able to sit, sit down there exponentially longer than FE is able to, because FE's like the way that uh, Antonia Dodge and ENTP described it. Um, FE is usually just trying to like, again, the social anesthesia thing, usually trying to like soften things enough so that they can like pull out their TI scalpel to like, yeah, yeah, to yeah. Some, some sort of like fix. Yeah. And so for me as an ENFJ, it's like some people listening could probably be like, oh, so then you guys don't really care. And no, it's like, no, that's how we show that we care. Yeah. The, the way that we show that we care is because we, our care is like, wait, but you know, I'm thinking of like the Incredibles where uh, <laughs> just randomly came to my head, like where Mr. Incredible like jumped and saved the man that was like falling, like trying to like kill himself. And he was like, hey, I saved your life because the man sued him. And, he, and so he's like, right. Mr. Incredible was like, hey, I saved your life. And then the guy's like, no, you didn't. You ruined my death. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> well, no, like in our head, it's like, that was me demonstrating that I love you, that I, shoot, I do not like sitting down here in this well. Do you think I would have done that for anyone? I went down there with you. And even though I was watching the clock <laughs> and waiting for the opportunity to, okay, now we've been here long enough. I think you're strong enough for us to both climb up this ladder and leave. Yeah. That's my way of showing you that I love you. Where it's like for FI, it's like, I'm showing you that I love you by sitting here, period. And then an FE user might be like, you're not even trying to like help me out. It's like, well, I didn't really know if you wanted to come out of this. I just thought that you might need company down here. So yeah. it's really interesting. Like nobody's wrong in how they view this, but this is how like FE or TI might view that situation versus like an FI TE user might view it. Yeah, and it's interesting because it's like, I think at the end of the day, we have the same goals, but we have different processes. So it's like, I think FE first visualizes like, okay, we're going to get them out of the well, how? Versus, yeah. and it's interesting because it's it tracks with um, the opposite function. So it's like, F-I-T-E, I will think like, oh, I hope, you know, my friends, if they're struggling or they're going through a hard time, that things get better. And if I can help them with that, I totally want to. But I think that I'm not capable of helping them until I very deeply and fully understand their emotional mindset and situation. Mm -hmm. So it's like, mm -hmm. I need to sit down there for a long time with them until I can figure out like, okay, what's the best route out versus if I know someone really well, like my best friend is an INFP. She'll come to me with a problem. We can move to problem solving within like half an hour because which is fast for us because I know her so well and I know her inner world so well that it's like, okay, I already, ha I have this contextualized already so we can move to problem solving more quickly. But if it's someone I don't know as well, I'm like, okay, I have to, similar to how TI has to understand everything about the system of thought before it feels comfortable influencing, FI has yeah. to understand everything about that person's emotional reality before they can suggest what they should do. Because I'm like, I don't want to suggest something. And then it turns out that makes it worse for them emotionally in another area. 
So it's like my mm-hmm. first instinct is to empathize and keep empathizing and keep empathizing and, you know, share, like make, tell them stories that make them feel less alone and stuff. And then once I'm like, okay, I'm sure that I have at least like 90% of the emotional layout here. Now I feel like I can offer some suggestions of what to do that, that um, wouldn't be ill-advised the same way TI never wants to offer information that it thinks would influence someone in the wrong direction. So both of our end goals are the same, but the processes are very different because we're coming in from like different angles with it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like I would automatically feel like in most situations, like I do know how to get us out of here. Um, But unfortunately, in order to be able to get us out of here, sometimes I do have to, not even unfortunately, because it's not as painful. It depends on the situation, but it's like, no, I don't mind sitting here with you for 20 minutes or however, and like allowing you to be able to get it all out and everything and empathizing with you. I I like to empathize. So that's not like to say that FE users do not like to empathize. That's totally far from the truth, of course. But it's like, yeah, like I feel like that is, again, like it's necessary, like that's part of that process of this is how I'm going to get you out. (laughs) Whereas like, you know, FI is like, like you just explained, like, it's not, it's going like in the reverse direction, like, okay, yeah, sure. I have to get, like, I can get you out, but like, I, or I hope that you can get out, but like you said, I have to really sit there and absorb and understand. And then that made me think like, oh, that could potentially be the reverse of like, if I'm trying to help somebody out of like a specific worldview, yeah. that would probably be the well that I would actually dive into. And I'd sit there with like, okay, oh, this is why you're a Satanist, you know? <laughs> and, and it's like, I don't know. And it's yeah. like, oh, wow, you know, and it's like, I cannot, you know, sure. I, 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 I don't even think I can provide you a ladder until I understand completely why you have this, you know, these thoughts or whatever. So that, that, so then it's flipped when it comes to like, what we what our worldview might be and like that's where it's like okay i have to really sit here and know all of the information that you know which is where my ni and ti i guess comes in so it's like okay i totally understand everything all of your philosophies and what you think over here now i can probably like help you come out or maybe i might stay down here with you you know because that makes more sense i'm going to reject whatever i believe i don't know (laughs) something i hear a lot from ti users that as a te user i don't relate to at all is like all thought, I mean, I understand it, but I don't like feel it, you know, it's like all thoughts, all perspectives, all ideas, all um, opinions, even like wrong pieces of information are just data points. Like, it's like, you need to know all of it, right and wrong information is both, both of those things are important. As a user, user, I'm like, no wrong information matters. We should only have the right information. Like, I, I can intellectually understand what TI users are saying when they say that. Like, I'm like, I get it on an intellectual level, but I don't feel like having any sort of wrong information is a good thing. And I think the same might be true of FE with negative emotions. Cause I yes, think, I'll like, say yeah, that. they're like, why would you like, why have a negative emotion? It's an inherently bad thing. The way I see like incorrect information is an inherently bad thing. But for FI, it's like all emotions, good and bad are very important to understand. Cause our, our, desire is to understand the entire emotional spectrum the same way TI's desire is to like understand how all of the information fits together. So it's like, if I see a friend in a well, I'm like, oh, I might, they might, might not even need to get out of that well. Like I could just maybe walk by, say hello, wish them, <laughs> wish them well, <laughs> and then like go on my way. Right. Like I remember having these conversations with, um, an ESTP friend one time about another friend of ours who was an ENFP. And she was like, yeah, this, this other friend is just like making this series of decisions that I think is just like leading them in a very bad direction. And I was like, and she was like, oh, how are we going to stop them? And I was like, we don't stop them. Like they're <laughs> going to go learn lessons. That's the point of life. Like, th- yeah, it's going to be a train wreck for sure. But it's like, I think they know that. Like <laughs> you usually know when you're heading towards a train wreck, especially as a baby, <laughs> but it's like, oh, there's valuable lessons to be learned in the train wreck that I think they seem to want to go learn. So we should just let them go learn them. Versus like, I think yeah. FE is like, no, don't go into train wreck. Like, cause they don't see the value in that. Um, but FI does see the value in negative emotions. So we don't mind um, necessarily like, even if our friends are in the well, it's like, well, maybe they want to be there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, sees, it sees all of the emotions as piano keys and there's no such thing as a bad piano key. It might be played in the oh, wrong. I love the, that. Yeah, and the wrong note might be played in like the wrong song, but 
in a different song, it might be like a different context yeah. might be played correctly. Whereas like, and this, this was a big epiphany for me having an ISFP wife, because as an <laughs> ESJ, I, I literally did not learn this lesson until last year, September. <laughs> Welcome to an INTJ and like, uh, she was like, so you're always trying to keep Jamila in a happy state of mind. And I'm like, yeah, why, what kind of husband would not, what kind of significant other would not like that's, but then I started thinking about it from a typological standpoint. Like I never even thought how that could be like for an FI user, like, oh, they sometimes like negative emotions. So yeah. when she gets in her moods at times randomly, I'm immediately like, I gotta get her out of the well. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I. Why are you unhappy? Whether it's my fault or it's not my fault, I have to try to make you happy again somehow. Um, but maybe she wants to sit down there. And I've been learning like to just, like you'd said, like, oh, she's in, she's at the bottom of the well right now. Wish her well. She knows that I can't sit down there for long. So we have that. <laughs> she knows how to climb back up and find me when she's ready. And I will do my part and not try to like force her back on up. It's like, oh, are you? You're back up here. Cool. Let's get back to happy stuff. But she asked me, Jamila asked me like, so Denzel, like, you like always being happy? And I'm like, yeah. The only time like I probably like will not like being happy or something is like, or I want to be angry. It's like, if it's like an injustice for other people. Yeah. And I'm yeah. definitely going to get angry. And I'm like, no, we have to do this for Black people or yeah. boom, boom, boom. But yeah. It's like a pointed, it's like, it's like the negative emotion serves a better purpose. So it's like, then it matters, but it's like, yeah, for us, it's, yeah, it's interesting. Cause I've noticed that difference myself, like even with my FE valuing friends or like, I have this one memory of like this FE user I dated who like, I was having a bad day one day and she was like, okay, go take a bath. And was like very insistent about it. And I was like, I don't understand. Like, do I smell like what's going on? <laughs> And she's like, no, just go take a bath. So I went and took a bath and I came out of the bath and she'd like cleaned the whole, my whole apartment. It wasn't not our mutual apartment, it was my apartment. Cleaned the whole apartment, like, like laid out all of my favorite foods, had my favorite music playing. And I was like, this is such a foreign function. <laughs> like, what is this? You're just trying to make me feel better. Like what? But it's like, and then it's like my current partnership because we're both FI users. It's like, one of us is having a bad day. It's like, oh, we're going to sit down and analyze that bad day. Like, and it's, and both things. <laughs> are needed in different situations right but it's just so funny that it's like one is always more foreign to us than the other so it's like it's probably so weird to you to go to your partner and be like oh you're having a bad day let's talk about all your bad feelings like what else do you feel that's bad but it's like that's what if i want sometimes and in the same vein i'm like oh it's very weird to me if i'm having a bad day and someone just tries to like make my day better <laughs> but it's yeah. like, that's what, that's what Effie does and it's like both are needed it's just like like everything about context so maybe that even like wraps it up nicely as you know all of these functions are super wonderful and super important um it's just about figuring out which ones you're using like mm -hmm. enfj enfp no one is better or worse than the other but they are radically different so it's yeah. just about like figuring out what's accurate for you as opposed to figuring out like, oh, which one is it like better to be, which I think a lot of people kind of approach type with the thought in their head of. And it's not about that at all. Exactly. Fully agree. Yeah. This was very, very, very enlightening for me. Um, Damn. Even, like, yeah. So I'm always excited to be doing videos with you per usual. And it's so awesome to continue to be learning from you. Um, and I'm pretty sure this would be helpful to a lot of people watching. Yeah, if you guys have questions, um, let me know in the comments. I'm not always great about questions in the comments, but please find me on Twitter, Heidi Prieb one and I will answer your questions there because I'm very good at answering Twitter notifications. And make sure you're following Denzel if you aren't already again. So I will link his YouTube uh, in the comments. It's an awesome channel. And he also has, he's also very active on Twitter. Do you want to drop your Twitter handle? Yeah, on Twitter, I'm DZ2 underscore bless. So that's D-E-E-Z-Y the number two and then underscore bless. Um, yeah. Well, thanks. If you're still here, thank you guys for watching for this long. We hope that clarified some stuff for you. If you're confused about ENFP versus ENFJ, or if you just wanted to learn more about the types before we started, I was like, oh, this is just going to be a giant, this is going to be metaphor city. Like me and Denzel are going to get on a call and we're not going to talk about a single tangible thing. We're just going to give a million very inspired metaphors. So hopefully that was helpful for you. Probably if you're an intuitive, that was helpful for your sensor. That might have been like, but we're the actual <laughs> things we can use. Bowling, <laughs> so <remember> bowling <laughs> digging for treasure, pirate ships. That's the summary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, hopefully that was helpful for you guys.
guys. And um, yeah, we'll see you next time. <laughs>